pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing uh, Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, I'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. and take a quick attendance. Uh, Hallie? Here. Gaston? Here. And I'm here, so that's three here with two absent. So we can begin. And um, with our new adult use marijuana. And this meeting, we're just, uh, Gaston has sent around, or Steve sent around something from Gaston on issues um, covered in the agreements. So I don't know if anyone, Gaston, did you want to just kind of go yeah. very quickly? Sh sure, happy to. So Great, thanks. Um, what I wanted to do was just get, kind of get a baseline of understanding of what these agreements have addressed that is potentially relevant for a license. So that's, um, I went through all the agreements and just tried to basically name, name the issue and then include a sample clause from one of the agreements that, mm -hmm. um, that speak, spoke to that issue. And okay. so, um, uh, I mean, uh, Steve, can you, share your understanding of what is going to happen to these agreements to to kind of see where where our room for action comes up i believe the town manager is open to um either paring them down to the minimum legal level or getting rid of them if there's a license that replaces it okay okay um so um so i i i, I guess that um maybe we can just uh look at the items on the list and share our thinking about which ones of these are most uh are the kind of thing that we would want to get into um potentially i one quick question for steve um could we get a list of i know we, it would be very confidential what the payments have been to the town for each vendor because i'm just wondering like what the town is getting you don't know if we were to set a set fee to, like we do alcohol licenses, what that might be. I believe it's public, so I can get that for you. Although um, I think this came up in another one of our licenses, I forget which one it is, but we are, you know, the the municipal licensing is supposed to, um, you know, correlate to the reasonable costs incurred by doing that licensing. It's not just supposed to be set um, arbitrarily, but I do believe I can get that information for you. Right. Well, yeah. so so in the in this case, the 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 if we're talking about those community fees, and they and you'll see that they they've been referred to with different names, but um, they're calculated based on a percentage. Um, and I I don't have the document in front of me because I'm driving, but um, uh, it's three percent. Uh, three percent is it three right. percent of revenues or I, I imagine revenues, right? Three yeah. percent of gross revenue. Gross. gross revenue yeah. yeah so i guess what if i'm um based on steve's comment what that suggests to me is that um that should not be part of the license because we don't have the authority to to charge a fee like that right be, um uh, so that that sh that would be something that should remain in a separate agreement with the town if i'm on if is that how you um interpret this steve yeah, and um, I think there was a change in the state law recently. The, the state law changed concerning host community agreements, and um, I think it required much stricter accounting and um, kind of, you know, kind of a description of how the costs are incurred. And I think at the beginning it was just that three percent flat fee, but now um, I believe there's pretty strict limits based on you know what you know specifically articulable costs directly related to that. So I think a lot of towns have seen there. Um, host community agreement revenue go down significantly with um, with that change. Oh wow! Okay, so um, in other words, 
the, the same principle that we're subject to is being extended to the this income that the towns have been getting more or less yeah so it's it, they're, they're seeing a very significant uh drop in revenue because really there are not in most towns there really are aren't that many um articulable costs related to it uh okay so um uh, so, it, it, I mean, yes, uh, certainly the numbers then would be useful for, uh, for, 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 all, for any, any, in any case, but it, that, that may not be where we can do very much. Um, uh, so, uh, but, I, but I guess the other side of it is depending on what we think is important, there might be um, costs involved in doing the kind of regulation that we think would be, would be valuable. Certainly, yeah. But I can try to get the pre and post change revenues coming in. That would, I'm just curious, you know, what they're paying compared to the spoke or something like that. It used to be very significant. I think this town still has, um, Amherst does still have a significant amount of money from earlier HCA um, revenues that were earmarked for specific things, but there hasn't really been much ability to find out what to do with it. So. Is my understanding. Okay. So, um, is it also would it also be relevant to get reports uh, from public safety about what impact, if there has been any for, uh, to the town, like yeah, what services they've been? Could you do that? That would be nice to have. So, um, so. From what I understand, what we were just talking about, the three percent of gross revenue fee has not changed in Amherst yet, or it is going to. It, it may still be in the host community agreements, but I believe the state law change overrode that. So the state law change. So this whatever is in okay is not relevant. Okay. Anymore, so, yeah. I think that okay. changed last fall or winter. Okay. So can we find out what that is? Yes. Uh, I can speed? I can okay. find out what the pre and post change revenues were. That would be great, pre and post change revenues. Okay, uh, so pre and post change revenues, uh, public safety reports. Um, okay, so we want that information. Um, and what else? Well, I mean, you know, besides collecting revenue, these host community agreements did address a number of issues that seem pertinent to 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 licensing, and that I think are in the spirit of some of the ideas that that Doug was developing. Right. Um, that there's there's this commitment to hiring uh, people who who live in Amherst mm -hmm. um, and uh, who. Um, and, and to sourcing from vendors based mm -hmm. in Amherst, and and then there's reporting requirements that I think are designed in part to pick up on that information. But I think that if that's one of the objectives of our of, of our licensing, um, then then we I think can probably beef that up. Although I I think there's probably going to be some limits on. I don't think we can make like a, a requirement that they hire in town, and so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how the policy lever works. Like, I'm not sure how we. What's the nature of our capacity to push for that? Right. Um, how would we get that info, Steve? Is that is that a lawyer? What info? Oh, uh, what what the board could do? Yeah, if we, if we can require these companies to hire in town. Yeah, that would be a good resonance. question for the lawyer. So, all right. So, let's make a list of questions we want for the lawyer. Lawyer questions. So, hiring. Uh, so, employment requirements. Um, well, interestingly, I I didn't see that any of these agreements addressed um, like the diversity of of people hired or vendors. So that, right. um, I think that's an area that, um, that's an area potentially to, um, to look into. Okay. Um, yes, that is. So is that another, that would be another lawyer question for town council. Um, what can we, what can we do 
and the regulations and the license for that. Um, so to say, employ that sort of like falls under employment requirements, right? What would you envision for that guest on like quotas or? Yeah, well, or? no, yeah, right, exactly. I mean, how what what would it? How would that be? Uh, how would that be framed? Um, I mean, it, I, I, the language that these agreements now have for hiring Amherst residents and sourcing from Amherst-based vendors are just um, hortatory, right? And and so I'm not sure that um, that 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 we could or, or, or should do anything different than that. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it's been one of the bigger political issues in, in granting um, the um, dispensary rights, um, the effort to try to um, have minority owned businesses um, and it's, you know, they've had very mixed success doing that. Okay. Um, and how would you envision the board um, altering that? Because I know there's been a lot of uh, trouble at the state level, uh, but I don't think the board is envisioning like a limited number of licenses, right? There is limits built into zoning, but the licensing would not be limited like uh, like alcohol. So would you envision? So there couldn't really be preference because there wouldn't really be conflict. What would you envision, Gaston? Pre preference among. Yeah, I mean, I, I was still I was still thinking just in terms of um, adding to the principle of hiring locally. So um, uh, the principle of of trying to hire. Uh, diversely um as a as a goal is is what that's that's what i was uh having in mind just now okay i can add that to the other question yeah yeah so sort of basically what we're allowed to what language we're allowed to use in the regulations and license surrounding employment um who you can employ is that correct correct like we like to do the diversity thing, but um, you know, just figure out what we're allowed to do. We would like to do policy-wise, and we're also trying to understand what we can do. Right. Uh, and and you know, what we want to do policy-wise is is we can I think start getting start trying to identify the areas and and then talk about it further when we've got the the full board. Okay. Right. Oh, um, Steve, is it possible I don't know, uh, to get from public safety kind of statistics of um, adult use marijuana versus alcohol? Just of terms of problems? Yeah, problems. Yeah. Like just at sort of like a proportionally. Like from the police and fire department? Yes. I can certainly do that. So no one with a liquor license pays uh, an Im community impact fee, right? No, all that stuff was kind of created. That was created uh, for this. precedent for the for marijuana, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, all right, so hiring town residents, local vendors, um, and that kind of, let's see. It's I mean, the town annual, diversity. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Helen. It's just interesting, the annual report, we don't get any of that from bars or restaurants, kind of. No. Reserve number, you know, so that's an interesting thing to add. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of stuff I, that was created for, excuse me, guess there was a lot of stuff that was created for, um, for marijuana, you know, the host community agreements that never existed with uh, alcohol. I mean, I think there's a lot of concern at that time about what the impacts may be and, and things like that. And it, uh, it could be a good time to review some of those and see if they're really still necessary. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, do you have the, an opinion, I mean, does Paul or the town council want to do away with the community host agreements and just go straight to a license? Paul is open to that. Um, and so I guess we'll have to see 
you know, that's another question for the lawyer if they can be entirely done away with or if they there is some statutory thing. But in that case, he'd be content with kind of making those the de minimis meeting the statutory requirements and putting all the real regulation into licensing. Because that impacts like, you know, the 3% versus a set fee. Or if we could do as part of the license a percentage. Well, I, I understand that the 3% is dead is, is, okay. is my interpretation because mm -hmm. that's the, the revenues of the business has no obvious correlation to the expense of, for, to the town of regulating. Okay. So in that case, a set fee might be, or is what, what we have to deal it, with. It, it seems it's, if that's what I'm interpreting is, are you seeing it the same way, Steve? Yeah, that's would be my interpretation. Um, you know, if we're going down this list, the, the, the reporting stuff is interesting, but I, I'd say we kind of come back to that based on what, are, you know, basically what we think is important. That's what we're going to want them to report on. Let me bring um, this up to share. I just realized I never brought it up on the screen. <sighs> Can you all see that? Oh, yeah. what i what it, the um the manager stuff we're kind of used to that and um I, I i don't think we have something that says it in the same words but i think we understand that if we wanted to we could call a manager to come to us um uh so that seems appropriate and not such a big deal i thought that the marketing stuff was really interesting and um and 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 did seem to me like the kind of thing that we we might wish to weigh in on. Although I haven't been aware of any marketing for the dispensaries apart from their physical locations. I don't know about um, well and and emails. Um, I don't know about you all. No, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. Um... Um, but I do think the marketing is very interesting. Also the uh, town public health educational efforts. Company agrees to provide staff to participate in a reasonable number of town sponsored educational programs. My, I, I I wonder if any if a single such program has been organized. Yeah. I think there's been some in the schools, but I if I remember correctly, there's kind of a real lack of anything like that, especially anything like that with any real demonstrated value outside. Oh, so of schools. wait. So that how am I I'm reading this that so they're supposed to provide programs to the schools or they are supposed to take part in programs which educate the, the, the staff of these places? I think you know? it's, um, the, that's, that's what I'm the host sure. community impact uh, funds were, are supposed to go to our year mark for. Oh, okay. That right. or public safety costs. And... Okay. Okay, can we find out if there have been any, any of these, Steve? Yeah, I can. I can okay, that. that would be good. Um, and let's see, town. It's, I mean, it's, I, what, what the other thing that's interesting to me is just thinking about ideas about what might be relevant for alcohol that, that we haven't been doing. Yes. Well, I think the name manager and a time frame for replacing a manager that departs is something yes. we are pretty yeah. specific about. And also some set violation ranges kind of to give guidance. I mean, I don't see if there's been any sort of violation for any of these dispensaries. Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. So yeah, that's a good point. So change it, we make sure that we're like what we have, we have change of manager, we have violation. Um, I mean, we'd use the same 
when they came to apply for the license, we'd use the, sort of the same procedure, I, I'm assuming, right? Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so like, how, like, it's very nice to kind of kind of go through all of these and this is really great, but if we were kind of just set up a series of, of meetings, like I'm just thinking about the next time we meet, like what do we want to start working on first? Do we want to um, start working on like the, like Gaston, you says, you know, the, the principles behind it, or do you think it's better just well, to talk about the mechanics or? I, okay, so, I mean, my, um, I guess what I would suggest is that what we can, what we can do today mm -hmm. is identify what we think is um, potentially interesting here for a, and, and relevant for a license. Mm -hmm. It's been, uh, we've started creating our, our list of questions mm -hmm. and then we should, you know, try to make, try to make sure Doug can be at the next meeting of, okay. you know, I guess in two weeks. Right. And then we can, we can kind of debrief Doug and, and then try to kind of weave it in with the ideas that he had come up with and see where that ends up. Where, okay. like what are the what's the list of points that we think a license should cover based on what these agreements have been doing right and what other things doug had been thinking of and 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 kind of start from there that's so i i guess if for today we we can uh be prepared at, at the start of the next meeting to say we think x y z and j points from mm -hmm. these um uh, agreements are things that we should definitely consider including in a license um okay. and hear from doug and dylan hopefully and um and then kind of consolidate with the stuff that that doug was thinking about and then have one list of of items to be talking through and figuring out where we where we stand from a policy point of view and um and then i guess at that point we can um send off a list of questions to the attorney i think you know today we can write them down but maybe it's premature to send them until we have a more exhaustive list and talk to the other members of the board okay so all right so we know we're interested in uh some some kind of something surrounding employment policies right so we know i think we should consider i think we should definitely talk about that and um okay. and because that that was something pretty standard in all of these agreements right so e even if what we're saying is that we don't think we should get into that right. that's a kind of a policy decision that i think okay. we should act actively make okay all right um so we have um i think that's good i think the the town, uh, the public health educational efforts, I think are, we should definitely consider. Um, um, and then we wanted to, like the impact payments, I guess we're gonna figure out exactly what they are and whether or not we, like how much we're getting from them this year. Um, what else? Well, the the other items on here are are I guess things that I would um, put I mean, under the umbrella of public safety. We've got right. kind of police related and fire department related, right. and this town town diversion. I I understand what diversion means. The dispensary cannabis ending up in other people's hands. I right. I, I take it to, that that's what they're talking about, right? State, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So you know those safety, those public safety matters are, I think, are are definitely important in a license, and so we've got starting points uh -huh. in these agreements. Is is how I'm seeing it. Okay. All right. And and. and Mary, and just to kind of follow through on your question about process, right. I would think that when as a board, we've been able to say, you know what, we think these are the eight or 10 things that should be in a license, then we would want to 
get these dispensaries to to give us feedback and and, and the public at large. Mm-hmm. I I would think, right? Right. Oh yeah, definitely. So we want to see that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So, um, is there? Anything else in here that we want to talk about right now in this list? I mean, we have our, so what we have, we have the, um, so Steve, you're going to get the stats on public safety. Yep, I'll look for the uh, public safety diversion, diversion education programs funded and the okay. pre and post change in the host community agreement revenues. Great, thank you. And um, we're going to hold off on questions to the lawyer until we talk to everybody else and we have a more comprehensive list, correct? I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay. One quick question, just given Doug's new job, and I, yes. I think I won't be here at next meeting, uh -huh. so looking at colleges with Sash, but um, if there's a time on a regularly scheduled meeting that it's light, that might be a time. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I, I agree. Maybe that I wonder if we can get this on the next agenda. J just the debrief part anyway. Yeah, well, certainly um, okay. on that and a related issue, um, I could certainly just leave it on the standard agendas for the time being. And if we get yes. to it, we get to it, if there's no update, then there's no update. And also I have um, spoken to some people about a subcommittee and I believe that would be possible. And the big advantage of that would be there's no quorum requirements. Um, so, um, I okay. will, um, get some more firm information about how to set that up, but we could potentially start doing that, um, two weeks from now. I think the board will have, the okay. board will have to take a vote to establish that, but that'll, um, ease the pressure a little bit. Okay, great. That would be really good. Well, maybe we could just take a minute to think about if, uh, the items on this list make us think of anything else, um, or thinking about how we regulate alcohol sales is there something else that we would want to you know get on the discussion list so this is all i mean this is you're talking about like an off premises there's no uh, premises. Obviously, there's no premises. Yeah, for, yeah, for right, right. right. That, that, so, because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. So we don't because we like for a short term we we require we, we need to know who the distrib right the distributor is, but we don't know where this is coming from necessarily. I mean, do we know the same for we don't know the same for off premises, right, Steve? Like no. Yeah, we just it just kind of all right. Well, they I mean they have to go through this whole state regulated. I mean that's that stuff's controlled by the. Uh, the ABCC. That's the ABCC anyway. Yeah. Okay. And in this case, there was also the CCC kind of covering all of these stuff, these things right. too. So. Okay. All right. Um, but I mean, it'll be like just thinking about alcohol, and this is maybe slightly off topic, but it'll be interesting to hear what the results are of the um, public safety impact versus of marijuana versus alcohol. Everything I've heard is that it has yeah. been basically nil. Yeah. Um, although I don't know how much there is for off-premises licenses either in Amherst anyway. Right. Um, and, but I can get data to confirm that. Okay. I mean, anecdotally, the only thing I've heard of are some neighbors who twice have had to take their dogs to get to the vet after they've consumed babysitters stashes of oh my gosh but it's not really a human impact so. right somebody just left stuff around or they had cashed it or they had it in their bag and the dog oh. yeah two big collies can reach a lot <coughs> oh my gosh so i mean they, they were just left their, they just left their bag out or somebody had put it down for a second or left, yeah she was dog sitting and you know left her dog bag out and 
Oh, I thought you meant this outside a store. Okay, in somebody's house. Oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. at a house. At a house. Sorry. Yeah. Like that community impact. Um. Is there anything else that anyone's guessed on that you see, or Hallie that you see, or you can think of about the alcohol license that? I mean, um, do we require, don't we require like a, on the license, there's something like a background check or a history of employment. Is that required for this one? Not for the no, most community uh, agreement, but. No? Okay. But I mean, that is something we could potentially yeah. put in. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I mean, it'd be good to get it kind of more in, ali in, in alignment with the alcohol regulations. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I agree. I think we're trying to kind of Frankenstein the um, the alcohol regulations and these host community agreements, and then just kind of giving it our policy spin. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't have. Trying to think of what else from that alcohol license that we could use. I mean, certainly if there's um, a hearing, the hearing process will include that. Yeah, I think that'll be yeah. the biggest thing. And I think the biggest thing that this pro that this um, adaptation can get us is um, uh -huh. is is the ability to kind of do that kind of you know response to to problems that occur. The host community agreements aren't responsive at all. I mean, they're right. contracts. They can't. There's, there's no provision to. Um, to revoke them or have penalties or anything, I think that'll be the biggest the biggest benefit. And I think I think with the benefit yeah. of hindsight, a lot of what went in the host community agreements will be kind of either duplicative of, of state regulations or unnecessary, you know, over caution at the time they were drafted. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. So that the history of employment, um, hearing process, violations. Um, and fees stemming from violations. Um, let's see, anything else? I'm trying to think. Hi. We lost you for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah my, my, my phone like got onto some Wi-Fi. It couldn't connect to it for some reason. But uh, oh, no, I, I was wondering, I know that there's very strict rules about like the medical versus the adult, the adult yes. use. Okay. And I, my question is whether we, un we understand that that's all covered by state regulation and not something that we would need to get into um i mean in other words like the 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 dispensaries that serve both medical and non-medical customers have to have you know clear segregation of of counters and and stuff like that and that, my question is whether that's something that we um uh could or or would need to address We're not really experts about that stuff, and I no. think it's covered by state law. But I, I'm that's a question I'm asking, I guess. So I would. So do we? Would we issue a license for a medical one or just for an adult use one? I mean, just I think, if. I think that's go? a question we could both ask the lawyers if we can require a license for the medical, and then a policy issue of if of if we want to. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I I assume that in kind of displacing these host community agreements, we would have to be also um, covering the, the medical, but, I, but I, uh, I'm ignorant about that. Yeah, I don't know. All right, put it on the list. I believe um, they have to have host community agreements as well, but that's another thing you know, we could take a look at and say, is, this, is, is it really you know, necessary to license them? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. okay. Or maybe different fee schedule, fee structure, different requirements. I think that's, um, they're all good questions. Okay. Great. Uh, oh, and another item actually is, um, is delivery. Um, right. Which is, I guess, 
something that I'm not aware of any Amherst um, dispensaries doing. And I guess I'm not aware of any liquor stores doing either. So I can answer that for the medical, uh, or then sorry, the marijuana. Um, what, what the state law prescribes is that um, the uh, there, there's a special state license type for um, a delivery based service, and they can um, just deliver. I, I don't want to say by right, but with the license, no matter where they're located, they can deliver to anywhere, um, any town that voted more than 50% yes for the um, referendum. And Amherst voted more than 50% yes. So the Amherst could regulate um, the ones that are based in Amherst. I don't believe there are any. I think it's prohibited by zoning still, but they couldn't regulate uh, just delivery operations going into Amherst. Oh, okay. So, okay. So something in like Northampton or wherever. I would assume a lot of them are just going to kind of congregate in, you know, the Chicopee, Worcester, oh, Westboro, okay. places, places on highway interchanges and probably scale up pretty quickly. I don't know exactly where that stands in terms of the business, but that's okay. what I would assume is it'll probably pretty quickly scale up. But there isn't any located in Amherst anyway, and the town, um, I don't believe, could regulate just, just delivering to Amherst as opposed to based in Amherst. Okay. All right. That's good to know. So that's something we don't have to worry about right now. And um, unlike liquor stores, I don't believe the dispensaries can just do that by virtue of their normal license. I think they have to have that that additional license as the well. Special one, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Anything else from here or from our? standard off-premises license that we may want to consider? Um, I don't have anything else on my mind. Anything else? Okay, Helly, anything else no. on your mind? No, okay. I would maybe just touch on um, odor, um, odor control, yes. which could be a factor for um, the, you know, any kind of um, production facilities or research facilities, maybe, or um, this, this mm -hmm. micro businesses. I believe there's a micro business that was licensed in Amherst, although I don't think it's it's in operating and has, hasn't had any work recently done to it. It okay. may have just been kind of canceled, but we haven't heard anything. But um, I think that's something that could create a local impact that the state law wouldn't really cover. And I don't know how you would objectively govern and control uh, odor. Um, mm -hmm. surprise site visit or something, but that's something that could uh, affect uh, a butters. Okay. Right. All right, the a butters notice. Notice. Butters, notice. butters notices could be good, yeah. Right, a butters notices included. Okay. So we have, well, that's a, a lot of stuff that we've got. Um, so we're going to put this on the agenda for next week. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it as a standing schedule, item. Leave it for, a standing um, item? Okay. Yeah. And, and then, um, oh yeah, go ahead. I'll look into um, establishing a subcommittee. There might be a, a, a vote the board has to take at the next meeting. Okay. And we'll look into um, how that's done. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll, we can bring Doug and Dylan up to speed at next week. And then are we going to keep the meeting for, what are we on today? We're on the 8th? The next week Shall we talk about it next week and decide? Yeah, yeah. And then because it would be the 23rd. Um, okay. And then we have a lot of things, uh, ideas for the license pulled from this list and from uh, the off premises alcohol list, all alcohol license. And um, then we can go through Doug's list as you suggest, Doug's draft regulations as you suggested, guest on. Okay. And just kind of figure it all out. So um, so next week we bring Doug and Dylan up to speed, correct? Yeah. We'll start talking some more. Steve, you will get the statistics and we'll continue compiling a list for the lawyer. Does that sound good? That right. sounds good. And one other thing I would just put in your ear is um, I think, uh, you know, board should probably think about whether they want to do um, cover all potential license types with these regulations or just the ones that exist for now might be a, oh. a bit much to chew off, um, you know, drafting up regulations for cafes and things like that in the first draft. But at the very least, um, you know, we could make notes about what we think about that kind of regulation and maybe pass a first draft with just the uh, existing license types, but but make it um, 
expandable to cover um, other license types as well. Oh, I think so. Just yeah, the way, yeah. Just, it's just in the way it's structured. And, right. and also keep in mind, there are other license types that are allowed, like micro businesses. And um, okay. I, I know that one is for sure. But I think there's dispensary, medical, micro business that are certainly allowed in Amherst. And, and they, those may require different um, different touches. So these are um, ABCC licenses, correct? So micro businesses? Um, uh, CCC, med- but yeah. C- oh, yeah. sorry. CCC. Yeah. Sorry. CCC. So micro business, medical dispensary. Are those the only two? Are there others? There are, if you give me a second, I think they're all covered in our zoning bylaw. But I know there's, um, I'll just go to the list rather than do it off the top of my head. So there's a medical marijuana treatment center. There is off-site medical marijuana dispensary, recreational marijuana retailer. Those are the ones probably will have the focus of the focus of craft marijuana cultivator cooperative and marijuana cultivator. Um, those wow. may be two separate but combined in, in our zoning bylaw. Um, uh-huh. Independent marijuana testing laboratory, marijuana product manufacturer, marijuana micro business, marijuana transporter, marijuana research facility, uh, marijuana social consumption operation. Or social club and delivery only retailer. Wow. Okay. There's a whole list. That's a lot. Okay. Well, okay. And as of now, delivery only retailer, social consumption, um, and that's it are the two that are completely forbidden in Amherst for now, and all the rest of them are allowable by special permit in various zones. Okay. All right. Um, yes, we should probably craft these to cover all potential license types and think about the social consumption and delivery, even if it doesn't seem likely to happen. And Dylan did a lot of work on the, the club stuff, so he'd be helpful with that. Yeah, I think it um probably not likely in the short term, but right. I'd say maybe inevitable in the longer term. So yeah, uh, yeah. at the very least, maybe we could set it up with you know general regulations for all, all businesses and yeah. Um, however strict or, or lenient that may be, and then more detailed for, for each of the subcategories. Right. Maybe that might need specific um, right. specific regulation. Well, we should prepare for all contingencies, I suppose. So. Okay, yeah, I, great. I would think probably just, yeah, it would probably make sense to do the first draft of just just the existing ones and then do this, you know, work on the, the other ones after, after the first draft is passed and adopted, but. Um, all right, sounds great. Sounds good. Um, and I will also ask the lawyer what um, what the town council would have to do to authorize this uh, this authority for the license commission. Okay, that would be good. Thank you. Um, any other thing else on this? Any other questions? Or not? No, I do want to thank you, Gaston, for putting this document together. Yeah, this was great. It's really useful. Thank you. Yeah, okay, no, my, yeah. my pleasure. Sure, and, yeah. and uh, Steve, thanks for uh, for taking the time. Okay. Um, all right. So our first meeting on this topic is, I guess we're done. Unless anyone has anything else to say, um, do we would, move? To- motion to adjourn. Oh, I guess oh, 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 before that second, did I will just ask, um, would 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 you like me to set up to put a uh, agenda item on the next meeting to establish a subcommittee, if that's possible? Um, what do you guys think? Subcommittee? I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that it's uh, useful to have a committee of the whole, so to speak, to canvas ideas and figure out how we feel. Uh-huh. But for the, the next phase of work, a subcommittee can be more effective. Right. I think the big benefit will be I don't believe there's a three person quorum requirement. So, right. Okay. That would be great. All right. Good. So let's do that. All right. So is there a second to adjourn? Thanks, Hallie. Um, take a vote, Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. We're adjourned at 5.46 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Steve, so much. Thanks, Gaston. Thank you and all Hallie. very much. All and right. See you next week. Enjoy Hallie, your weekend. Hopefully the smoke goes away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, right? Bye-bye. I'm seeing blue. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>